Welcome to this Breakaway Crochet Tutorial. This video goes along with the written pattern for this mini granny square bag which you can download for free from my Ravelry Pattern Store. While the written pattern sets out the step-by-step -step instructions for this project, in this video I will focus more on specific concepts that might be hard to understand by reading the pattern alone. And if you haven't done so already, I strongly suggest that you watch a previous tutorial where I gave a much more thorough explanation of the techniques we will be using here. So to ensure you understand all the essential skills you will need for this project, begin by making this sample swatch from that tutorial. And remember to check out my Breakaway Crochet website for more tutorials, as well as the motif library, project ideas, inspiration, and much more. Please see the description for links to all these resources. To give you an overview of this project, this bag is a miniature version of the very popular 13 square bag that you have no doubt seen before. But what's going to be different this time is that the whole bag, minus the heart, is crocheted using one length of yarn. That means we will end up with the look of a typical granny square bag, but without having to cut the yarn between each square. As is typical with breakaway crochet project, there is a sequence to follow when crocheting the motifs. The squares are going to be worked back and forth in rows, but for this bag, the squares are arranged in an unusual pattern. We need to stagger the position of the squares on each row so that we end up with a piece that looks like this. It's not really a big deal to do this. All we need to do is to change the number of squares on each row as well as stop short at particular places on some of the return rows. This will make more sense as we go along. Once all the squares have been established we go along to finish the first squares of each row. And at the same time, we will be joining them to the previous squares to give the final shape of the bag. To make our lives easier, it will be important to label each square with a letter as we go along. There are at least a couple of ways of doing this. One way is to use little alphabet beads with holes big enough to fit on clip style stitch markers. You will need letters A through M. If you don't have alphabet beads, then substitute by writing the letters on small pieces of the paper and attaching them to the stitch markers. You may think of your own ideas, and if you come up with something interesting, Please share with us in the comments. So let's start now with making the squares. There are two squares on the first row, squares A and B. And I'll go through these two squares in detail to give you a review of the basic techniques. Remember from the practice swatch, we started every square exactly the same way with working the first round. I'll just review that for you now as we start square A. So let's begin with three yarn overs and now we make the floating ring by doing another yarn over, pinch, yarn over, pinch, yarn over, and pull through the two pinched loops. There's our floating ring. Let's make the first double crochet of the row, around I mean, by pulling through two, pull through two, and there's our first double crochet of round one. Remember, we don't need these extra two loops on round one. They will kind of hang out until we're ready for them later on. But to give us a little bit more leeway, let's take this middle loop off the hook by spinning our beginning piece around the hook and there we've got a little bit of slack yarn here and this loop here which we will totally ignore 
around one. Just again, make sure you don't catch this in as we go. Okay, so we've got the first double crochet of round one. Let's continue now for a typical granny square by working two more double crochets into the floating ring. And those three stitches are the um, first granny cluster of the round. Continue with chain two, granny cluster, three more times. So there's our, we should have, of course, our four granny clusters with two chain in between on each corner. And I was careful not to catch in the slack yarn as I went. Let's close round one with a chain and a single crochet into the first stitch. That single crochet helps us position the hook right in the corner of this round one. Round two will also start the exact same way on every square with a restore double crochet. So we're always going to have a restore double crochet to start the round. And that's where we use our slack yarn and our spare loop to make that. All right, so to make our restored double crochet, we need to get our slack yarn back on the hook as a yarn over. So to do that, just flip round one from front to back over the hook. And there, that's sort of loaded up all the loops we need to complete a double crochet. So let's finish that off with pulling through two, pulling through two. There's our first double crochet of round two. Continue with two more double crochets in the same space. Chain one. Um, just remember we're only working that one granny cluster in this first space. All right, so I've done the chain one and a granny cluster in the next space. And that, for, for this project, that is as far as we're going on this square. I'll go ahead and mark it. And now we're ready to move on to square B. So I've gone ahead and worked the first round of square B, just like I showed you before. Let's start round two again with the restore double crochet. And now we start joining our stitches. So as I work along the rest of this side of round one on square B, I'm going to be joining at the same time to this square A. All right. Now remember, after the restore double crochet, we always have to skip three stitches behind the hook to figure out which back loop to pick up to make a grab double crochet. So one, two, three. Here's our third stitch. Just dip the hook behind and grab the back loop. Come back to square B. And let's work a grab double crochet in the same space. So it just starts out like a normal double crochet by pulling through two. And then on the second pull through, we pull through all three loops to make a grab double crochet. That's what joins the two squares together. Let's work another grab double crochet and from now on we just we don't have to skip any stitches. We just go right to the next one as we go along. Alright, so there's the next loop to grab onto for the next grab double crochet. Worked into the same space. 
and that is actually the equivalent of a grab granny cluster. The next stitch is a chain, but we need to grab it in. So let's work a grab chain by going through the back loop of the next chain and just pulling through those two loops. There's our grab chain done. Now we need to do, we need to join up this granny cluster to the next one we make here. So I grab that back loop. Let's move on to the next space on square B and work our grab granny cluster. That's three grabbed double crochets into the same space. And of course this third stitch in this case is going to go through that slip knot, which isn't really a stitch, but that's all we've got to right now. So that'll work out okay. All right, so there is our first um, side of square B joined up to square A. We're going to continue now around square B without any joints. So that just means chain two, a granny cluster in the same space, Chain one, granny cluster, chain two, granny cluster in the next space, chain one, and just one granny cluster in this next space. And then we've um, reached the end of square B for now. So time now for a return row. We will be finishing up square B and partially finishing square A, or actually just working a little bit more on square A. And we continue that with chain two on square B and another granny cluster in the same space, chain one, granny cluster in the next space. And now we're going to finish off this corner with a chain one and a single crochet between square B and square A. So remember we find um, where that join is. Pick up these couple of little threads at the top of that seam do a single crochet there. Let's move on now to square A with a chain one, granny cluster in the next space, chain one, granny cluster in the next space. Because of the starting point of this project, these first two squares were worked in a slightly different way than the rest of the squares that will follow. So now that we have the exceptions to the rule out of the way, let's move on now to the second row of squares. So going back to a piece that's already worked, there are sque three squares on the row that we are about to work. And by understanding how to work these three squares, you will know how to work the remaining squares in this project. So I'll detail a couple of more techniques as I work this row, but just remember that these techniques will be common for the rest of the squares. So square C comes next, sitting above square A. I'll just start that one for you now. So here is round one of square C and the restore double crochet. Let's work the first side that is going to be joined. So square C is joined to square A using our grab stitches in a very similar way we've done before. So remember after a restore double crochet, when we are joining a square, this always starts three stitches back from behind the hook. 
One, two, three. And grabbing our double crochet and working into the same space. So this is exactly like we've done before. Work one more grab double crochet in that same space. Let's do now the grab chain. And a grab granny cluster grabbing on to these three stitches and working into the next space on square C. we have a chain stitch at the end of this side that we need to go into. So that's that, you know, one of the two chains that occur in the corner of every square. So let's pick up that back loop of that next chain. There we go, that was a little bit stubborn. There we go. Making that grab, chain, and that is the first joined side of square A. Now, now just remember every square from now on will start out in the exact same way to this point here. Alright, so the next side of square C is not, not joined, so let's just work that in the regular old way. Starting with chain 1, granny cluster in the same space, Chain one and a granny cluster in the next space. And that's as far as we're going on square C. Time for square D. It starts exactly the same as square C with the first round, restore double crochet, and the first joined side here. I'll go ahead and work that for you now and meet you at this corner. And now that I've gotten to the corner, in other words, I've um, finished with that last grab chain on that side there, um, we need to do our slip stitch in the space of the square that's kind of diagonal. So in the instructions or the written pattern, it will always tell you which square you will be going into. In this case, we were doing a slip stitch in that space on square A. And again, this, this only happens when we're, because we're um, turning the corner. We've done this side, and now we're going to do this side. So we need to make sure this corner is nice and tight for us. So in this case, we're doing a slip stitch into that space on square A. And now we continue joining up to square B. Now since we've already um, done our restore double crochets and all that, when we come to this side, we're starting with a chain stitch and we don't need to skip anything at all. We just find that first chain stitch and do the first grab chain. And now a grabbed granny cluster, just going into the next, oops, double crochet of square B, and working into the same space. Let's do our grab chain. And one more grabbed granny cluster into the next space. And don't forget, we've still got one more stitch. We've got a grab chain that goes at the end of the side. Okay, so just one more side of square D. Let's just do this without any joining 
The stairs are done to the floor four of the chain one, granny cluster in the same space. Chain one, granny cluster in the next space. And there's our breakaway point. Moving on to square E, which sits on the end here. I'll go ahead and start that for you. So that's round one, the restore double crochet and the first side worked. Again, I'd like you to slip stitch into the corner of square B, even though there's not going to be a square underneath. Um, I'd like you to do that there because that's actually going to be kind of like, that's going to be the top of the bag and we don't want that to be baggy. So let's slot a slip stitch into square B. And carry on with the next two sides. Chain one, granny cluster in the same space. Chain one, granny cluster. Chain two, granny cluster in the next space. And in the side with the chain one and granny cluster in the next space. And that's where we're stopping on square E. Time now for a return row. And that's pretty much like we've done in the first row. This is all probably very familiar to you by now. We start with chain two, a granny cluster in the same space, chain one, granny cluster in the next space, chain one, single crochet between the two squares, chain one, and move on. So just follow that pattern to the end of the row. When you get to square C, end with a granny cluster in the last space. Return row finished. So now I'll refer back to the original piece. We are ready now for the third row of squares. You see this time we've got four squares to do. Let's cover that up. We're doing these four squares and again that's pretty much just like we did on this second row. There will not be anything new here as far as um, starting the squares across the row. So I'll go ahead and work all of those squares for you and meet you bef just before the return row. So that squares F, G, H, and I all finished up now. And time for a return row. Things will be a little bit different here. I'll just refer back to the original piece. Where these are the, the squares we've just done. As you can see, the next row um, kind of starts above, what is that, square H. So, for this return row, we're only going to go over the first two squares. Normally, we would have gone to the end of the row, but this time we're going to stop at um, that second space on square H so that we can then jump up to the next row and position the squares in that arrangement there. So to work this return row, just do the chain two, granny cluster in the same space, chain one, granny cluster in the next space, chain one, single crochet, chain one, granny cluster in the next space, chain one, granny cluster in the next space, and stop there on square H. And for the rest of this piece, um, I'll just sort of talk you through this. Um, if this is square J, the next square to work, these three squares are worked. Again, just like we've done before in the previous two rows, just work those three squares. On the return row, just working over the first two squares here, ending on that square there, we're going to leave square J unfinished, stopping there on square K. That's so that then we can jump up, oh sorry, yeah that's square K, sorry, 
And now we're going to jump up to square M, and that's the last square we're going to establish. That's just a single square all by itself. And um, I'll just meet you at that space there, the, the northeast corner of square M. Um, again, if you've forgotten all the instructions, just refer to the written pattern. And um, I'll just work up to square M, and I'll show you what happens next. And now the magic really happens, because it's time to finish off our left-hand edges, or that's the top there, but all these edges here have unfinished sides um, that we are going to finish off, but at the same time we are going to be joining the two sides of the bag together. So by the time we work our way all along back to the beginning, our bag will be all joined up. And again, there's nothing uh, new as far as techniques, but since this is a bit unusual in terms of what we're joining together, I'll go through that with you. So, fortunately, um, square M and J, we just need to work around them without any joining. So, um, we don't have to worry about joining until we get down to square G. But I did want to pause when I get to this corner here. Um, so I'll just work these two sides of square M and join you there. So again, just continue with chain two and in the spa same space, a granny cluster, chain one, in the next space, granny cluster, chain two, granny cluster. Chain one in the next space, granny cluster. All right, so here's that point I told Joe is going to stop at. Um, as you can see, we have an unfinished corner on square M. Square K there has an unfinished corner, and we're going to, you know, just kind of um, start that corner on square J. And we do that, believe it or not, with just two or three stitches. <laughs> okay, so to continue on to finish square M and K, we have a chain one, and now we're going to single crochet two together. And I just wanted to show you where each leg of the single crochet two together, um, you know, where they go. So the first leg of the single crochet together goes between square M and square K. And we're just picking up our two threads at the top of that seam and doing this. Oh, sorry, just picking it up. Sorry, almost went ahead there. Okay, so pick up one there. And now we're going to go along between square K and J. There's our next seam and our next pickup point. So draw a loop through there. We've got three loops on the hook. Let's finish our single crochet two together by drawing through those three loops. And we get a lot of bang for our buck out of that one stitch there. We finish those two corners. Let's continue now with square J with the chain one. In the same space, a granny cluster. Chain one in the next space. Um, the usual thing of a granny cluster, chain two, granny cluster. Working our way around, chain one, in the next space, our last granny cluster for square J. And again, we have the same arrangement, another single crochet, two together to finish off square J and H and begin square G. So just one more time with that, chain one, find the seam between J and H. Pull up a loop, pull up 
pull up the next loop between square H and G. And pull through all three loops to complete the stitch. And I'll just pause there for a second. So um, we finished those two squares. Now, here's where our, our joining together of squares commences again. We are going to join this side of square G to this side of square J. And that's pretty much, you know, we're still going to use grab stitches. But it's still going to look pretty much like we're just joining the second side of our squares when we were doing that before. Here we go, beginning with square J, where we're grabbing onto the first chain behind the hook. Let's grab that back loop when we're doing a grab chain. Now let's do a grab granny cluster, again finding that first back loop behind the hook. Come back to square G and finish our grab double crochet in that first space. Two more grab double crochets to make our grabbed granny cluster. And notice, you know, this isn't going to lie flat. There, this is where the bag starts to take shape. So don't worry if that's poking up there. That's what it's meant to do. Continue, just like on the other sides, with a grab chain. And a grab granny cluster worked into the next space on square G. And do our next grab chain. You can see how things are starting to shake, take place now. Now let's finish this corner on square G. With just we've already done the um, kind of that first chain, which was a grab chain. So let's do a single crochet between G and F. All right, so now we're going to finish this next side of square F and join it to square J at the same time. So again, this, you know, don't overthink it. We're really just going along and just grabbing whatever's behind the hook pretty much as we continue working the unfinished sides. So again, in this case, find that first back loop behind the hook and do our grab chain. Grab granny cluster into that next space on square F. Grab chain. Grab granny cluster into the next space. And grab chain to finish that side. Now I'll just distort this a little bit. Continuing with square F and M. And actually, before we start um, that join, we've got another slip stitch I'd like you to do. If you remember how we do a slip stitch in the corner, this time we're doing a slip stitch in that space on square K to make sure there's no um, sort of slackness between. Okay, so now let's continue joining square F and M. As we work square F, we join it to M. Again, find the grab stitch, just look behind the hook, looking for the first chain stitch, and doing a grab chain. Grab 
grab granny cluster into the, the uh, you know the next space on the square F grab J and grab granny cluster in the next space grab chain to finish this side and let's finish let me get that label for you let's um, finish this corner of square F this time we just need a single crochet between square F and square C and that's finished off that section there Now let's move on to this side on square C. We're joining it to square M. Let me see if I can lay this out. So square C joined to square M. And this side goes along just like the previous side, starting with the first chain behind the hook and a grab chain. So I'll go ahead and work that and meet you here at that last single crochet between square A and square C. So here I am on the last single crochet between square C and square A. There's that little section finished. Um, it's kind of <laughs> hard to show you, but um, trust me, it's all going okay. <laughs> All right, for the next section, we are joining the next side of square A to our last side of square M. Again, we're just looking behind the hook, and we know what square we are joining to. And again, starting with a grab chain, and continue with the, um, the pattern as before to this um, corner here, the first granny cluster of this next space. So I've done that that side except for the grab chain. And before we go on, we've got a slip stitch to make into that space on square K. Now we're on the home stretch. We've just got one more side to, to join. This is um, as we finish the last side on square A, we're joining to square L. And everything should be um, looking like a bag by the time we do this. Okay, so starting with, again, the grab chain behind the hook. Grab granny cluster into the next space on square A. Grab chain. Grab granny cluster in the next space. Grab chain. And just finishing off this corner by slip stitching into the next space on square B. There's our our yarn tail we've got back to the beginning so I know <laughs> we're in the right place here again just slip stitching into that space in square B to finish up and I'll just do a chain one there and there we have our bag <laughs> and as we can see we've um, finished up in a good spot here. That's why there was that the unusual beginning. I wanted to finish there because now we can go straight on to doing 
the border and the handles. Um, I'm not going to go through that, I don't think, because it's pretty straightforward crocheting. It's basically just single crochets um, around either either in either stitch or space. Um, the handles are worked at the same time. So once you go past this peak and get to this one, you will be chaining 30, slip stitching, and then slip stitching back in the chains to come back to that space and then continue around and so on. So I, I'll spare you that. I think you'll be, if you can make this, you can read the pattern to do the, the border and the handles. And now I thought I would just do a quick review of how to make the little heart. Now this is following a pattern from my um, heart strings written pattern. There's videos as well. This is a two round heart. Um, I just will give you a quick review of that now. It starts with a floating slip stitch. Do a yarn over and pinch that yarn. Another yarn over, pinch, yarn over and pull through all three loops. And we have basically made a floating ring without any extra loop. So that's our floating slip stitch. Continue with a chain, double crochet into the floating ring. Three trebles into the ring. Four double crochets. A treble, which gets us to the, the pointy end of the heart. Four double crochets. Three trebles. A last double crochet, chain one, and slip stitch in the center ring. I try to kind of pull that tight to make a nice dip between the heart. All right, let's do round two. Chain one, skip that next stitch and do two single crochets into the next stitch. Call that an increase. Do three more increases in the next three stitches. Now just do single crochets in each of the next four stitches. Now we're at the pointy bit. Do a single crochet, chain one, single crochet into that same stitch. Let's come back to the other side with four single crochets. Four increases. Chain one and again slip stitch just go straight into the middle of the heart over everything. Pull that as tight as you can to finish that final slip stitch. Let me take one more stitch there before you finish off the heart. Now leave a long enough tail because you can use that um, then to attach, um, use this to attach to the bag. Mm -hmm. So that's, again, minimal yarn tails. Let's get my original bag with all the markers on it. So just, just grabbing in the V there. Just grab those, you know, just sew that through to make a little decoration for your bag. Of course, there are other ideas you can use to decorate your bag, but that's just um, one I am showing you now. So thank you for watching. I know this um, is kind of a challenging project. 
Um, the good news is the more experienced you become with my breakaway techniques, the more logical it all seems. And um, there is a learning curve, but once you get past the basics, it, it all flows along. Just follow the instructions. So if you have any questions or comments, please write in. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.